want people to know that these things happen. We want to shatter the taboo that surrounds pregnancy and infant loss. It's about time we spoke about it. In 2013, my husband and I lost our first baby at 20 weeks. In 2010, I had my first miscarriage. It was followed by my second miscarriage in 2011. I lost two kids. Uh, one I, 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 I lost uh, four years ago, a boy. I've suffered two, um, same year in 2015. One in May, the other one in December. Um, it's, a horrifying, it's a horrifying period in anyone's life and it's something I pray that no one else has to go through. I lost my daughter Jerry when she was six weeks old. I lost my baby because of a condition called preeclampsia. And uh, preeclampsia is a, uh, is a condition that only occurs in pregnancy and it manifests itself around the 20 weeks. We are always speaking about pregnancies, winning, raising babies and everything. But what about that mother who was so looking forward to be part of that? And they couldn't. I came across one in every four women uh, lose a baby or have a miscarriage. And these numbers were not for Kenya. <laughs> they were for the US and the UK. So I knew definitely that the numbers in Kenya are really, really bad. I had a myomectomy, which is the removal of fibroids from your uterus. After the myomectomy, I thought things were going to be easier. I would get a child and things would move on. But it went downhill from there. I had condition after condition, problems after problems, uh, complications after complication. At some point, my husband and I gave up on ever having a child. I didn't get to enjoy my pregnancy as I had hoped to. The pain was intense. It wasn't physical as such, as much as it was emotional. It really pained me that I couldn't get hold of my baby, whom I had thought so highly of. It was, I, I, I lacked the words to explain what I went through the first few days. The doctors had told me that I can never like get pregnant again because my blood and my baby daddies don't match at all. So uh, coming, coming to, so in my mind I knew there's no way like I can never get pregnant. I gave birth this year on May 5th. Uh, my baby was a boy as well. He was, I named him Shem. So Shem stayed for just five days with me, just five days. Uh, and I went through CS. The baby was, uh, uh, they took the blood from the, his umbilical cord to test the to test the jundis if he was okay or not. So the test came that he was fine and I could like breastfeed him. Everything was so fine. But on the fifth day, uh, he just he he woke up in the morning and he was so yellow, like his body was so yellow. Um, he was taken to the nursery where at 8 a.m. in the morning, but uh, the, the Jundis was very high as well as the late brothers, and um, he just uh, he passed away around 2.45 the same day. Jerry was born premature, and for one reason or another, complications in the hospital, and she was born. So immediately I delivered, the doctor picked that she had breathing complications which led her to ICU for about two weeks and then out of ICU to the normal wards and we were in hospital for two to five weeks. We were discharged and we went home and we spent a week at home and then Jerry's lungs gave in. They put her on oxygen and she didn't respond. So then we were told that she'd lost her battle. And that's why I'm doing this project today, to spread awareness out there, to let people know about miscarriages and infant loss and how they can help the grieved mothers, the mothers who've lost their young ones, the mothers who've lost their pregnancies. How do we support them as a society? And the first thing we do is to create awareness. We want people to know that these things happen. We want to shatter the taboo that surrounds pregnancy and infant loss. It's about time we spoke about it. We have had over 600 moms and dads pass through our hands 
We have our counseling. You have support groups that run physically and even on WhatsApp for those who are not in Nairobi or for those who are extremely busy. And then we also have a Rainbow Moms program to work with those who are now pregnant again or expecting again after loss. So at this moment, I'm, uh, I'm just trying to create awareness around it, uh, starting with a page called Prayer Clamps Foundation of Kenya. Uh, I'm reaching out to women, people who've lost kids through Prayer Clamps before, uh, people who are pregnant and they don't know what, you know, what to do. Uh, and they, they are seeing these signs and so what they're just sharing information and hopefully in the near future we'll be going out to public clinics and just talking to pregnant mothers and encouraging them and just telling, giving them the information because what I found out is that very uh, few women know about this condition normally we talk about miscarriages but uh, you never you really never get to know why you lost your baby uh, and, and knowing that this condition has uh, uh, um, you know, a prevalence of around 8 to 10 percent of pregnancies, and uh, people do not know about miscarriages and loss of children. It's not something that people should be embarrassed about, it's not something that people should hide, it's not something that you should blame yourself on. It happens, and it's not your fault. There are so many medical explanations for why people get miscarriages or why you get still bad or why you give birth to a child and they die soon after. There are so many explanations. The, when you have correct information, you will not imagine that somebody is bewitched or they are being punished by God or things like that. When you have proper information, you are able to know how to support them. You didn't get married to get children. Marriage is a, a, a unit that is complete even without children. It's really hard to, to say that when I'm standing on this other side, but it's a true. It's a full, complete unit with or without children because children are a gift from God and we don't demand for gifts. We ask and the giver chooses to give us or not to give us. Uh, about organizations that are out there helping women, there are so, so many. There's Empower Mama Trust, there's Still a Mom, Still a Mom Rainbows, uh, there's Waiting Wombs, so many organizations that you can reach out to them. They're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, and they are so willing to hold your hand. And they're very organized. They have counselors, they have a, a whole list of doctors that you can go to. Don't walk this journey alone. Reach out, you will be surprised. We are a big community, and we are growing, and we are standing out. Because we are saying, one in every four is not a statistic. One in every four is me. Anyone who's gone through through a miscarriage, um, I would urge them to seek help. Um, there are groups out there that are helping women who've lost who've lost pregnancies, who've gone through stillbirth, infant loss. Anyone who and these are people who understand exactly what you're going through. So don't suffer alone. Go out there, seek for help on social media, call a friend, inbox anyone um, on any platform that you're comfortable about, but share your story, let someone hear you, let someone know what you're going through, especially if you feel your circle of friends is not helping. Um, for me, what came through for me is that I had a very good support system. That is what helped me and molded me, and until now, I am in great, I am totally grateful to them. Me, I'm happy and I'm, 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 I'm accepting it day by day. No matter how, how painful and how stressful it may be, you can't really heal from it, but uh, you just have to be strong, you know? You just have to keep calm. You have to keep praying and believing in God that He hasn't really forgotten you. Even if they keep happening to you all the time, things just happen for a reason and God really knows it all. So I'm a mother of, I have a 10 year old, actually firstborn, and he's doing fine, he's very healthy, he, he never went through any jaundice, so he's in school, he's, and I'm grateful, he gives me joy in the house. What I've learned from the loss and from interacting with all these women is that it really helps to have support. And it really helps to have someone work with you that journey, and especially someone who's been there before. So it's my wish and my hope that all women who are going through the same can reach out for support. Uh, we're not saying that you forget your loss, 
it happened, it's part of you, but you live beyond it. You learn to be happy and to accept what happened. So my wish is that no woman will get into depression because they suffered a loss. No woman will have suicidal thoughts because they think they are walking this journey alone. There are people out here willing to walk with you, willing to give you the support. There are people who are willing even to sit with you, just to sit. If you don't talk, you'll have someone there sit with you, just to comfort you until you are ready to speak about it. Don't suffer alone. Reach out for support groups and we'll continue giving information about local support groups as we get them. So if there are other support groups out there and we don't know about them, maybe we could, they could reach to us and then we could spread the word together.